This podcast is brought to you by eHarmony. Finding someone who gets you is hard, right? You're not alone. That's because we're human. And there's a lot of different humans out there. Which is why eHarmony's personality-based dating app helps you find someone you can be your whole self with. Someone you can be fully comfortable with. That's what true connection and compatibility are all about. Being seen. Heard. Understood. When you match based on personality, you're already one step ahead when it comes to getting to know one another. So try eHarmony and get started today for free. eHarmony. Get who gets you. Tired of ads interrupting your favorite show? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Just head to amazon.com slash ad-free fitness to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Enjoy thousands of ACAST shows ad-free for Prime subscribers. Some shows may have ads. You'll know real when you get it. It'll say eBay Authenticity Guarantee, and you'll feel it. Maybe it's a head-turning handbag, a watch that says it all, jewelry that makes you look like the gem, sneakers and streetwear so fresh every step feels fly. When it comes to style and luxury, eBay gets it. They're making sure the things that you love are checked by experts. Not just any experts, specialized experts. Real people who love this stuff. With real hands-on authentication experience. So when you see that shiny blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, shop with confidence. Every inch, stitch, sole, and logo is verified authentic through a detailed inspection. That's how you know that eBay's got your back. Because when you finally step into those sneakers, put on that watch, get your real gold glow up, swing that handbag over your shoulder, or step out in that streetwear, you'll realize that feeling is unlike any other. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that feeling of real is always in reach. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Hello, 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 everyone. It's Jen. Welcome to Fat Mascara. I'm Jen, as I said. She is not just today because we're having a crazy storm here in the Northeast United States and just had to do pickup early for Lake and could not make it to this interview, which is a shame because we have the iconic Jamie Greenberg, aka Jamie Makeup, in the virtual studio. We have been wanting to speak with her for a while about her career, her products, all that, but it just so happened to line up that we had her coming on the show right about when we were talking about another topic that's been coming up a lot on Fat Mascara, and that is the youths and makeup and skincare. How young is too young to opt into makeup? How do you talk about makeup when you're putting it on for the first time? Do you need active glycolic acid on your face when you are nine? There was just a makeup line that came out I saw for ages three and up, but adult prices and the consumerism of it all. And I knew Jamie would have opinions on that. She has three kids of her own, so we're going to talk about that. We, of course, will also talk about the products she created, her amazing career. She's a celebrity makeup artist, like I said. Some of the celebrities she's done, in case you don't know who she is, she's worked with Kelly Cuoco, Rashida Jones, Kristen Stewart, Elizabeth Most. I could go on and on and on. And she's also done a lot of brand collaborations with brands like Almay, Burt's Bees, and Glossier. She lives in Los Angeles with her three kids and her husband. And yeah, she's represented by the Wall Group. What else can I tell you? You'll learn it all when we get into the interview. So let's do that now. Jamie, hello. Welcome to Fat Mascara. Thank you. This is a dream come true. Stop it. It is not. It's a dream come true for me. Oh my God. I've been listening to you guys for years. I actually do know that because we have one of those virtual dm kind of relationships. Yes. Welcome to the studio. Welcome to the show. Our listeners are going to be so thrilled to hear from you. This is funny. I saw this somewhere. I'm not sure where I saw it, but I saw, it might have even been in quotes, but that you are, quote, everyone's personal makeup artist. Yes. End quote. That's me. What does that mean? Where did that come from? I mean, it's totally true. Yeah, this happened, I want to say like 10 years ago when I started doing social media and I was so blown over by the audience and being able to contact them in a new way that we had never done before. And so I was like, I'm celebrities makeup artist, but I could be everybody's makeup artist because now I can talk to them. So that's where I came up with that. Okay, so you came up with that. I thought I was like, Vogue calls her everyone's, uh, you know, like I didn't know where it came from, but yeah, I love that. I, I do it everything feels, around here. <laughs> it feels true because, yeah, you spend, I mean, you have many jobs, you wear many hats, we'll talk about it, but you spend, like one of your main gigs, you work for the wall group, you do like celebrity red carpet all the time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's where it started, totally, yep. How did you get into that as opposed to like 
say, Real People Bridal or editorial or... I did it all. I mean, I started my first job out of college. I was living... Well, I didn't know that's what I wanted to do. But after college, I studied film and photography. So still in the world of art. And I lived in New York, where you are. And I was in editing, commercial editing, like L'Oreal Paris. That's why your videos are so good. Well, that's that's because <laughs> of Hannah. Shout out to Hannah. But yeah, I like storytelling, but I was always into makeup. But that wasn't that's not like a career that people would push you in back in my day. Back in the 90s, nobody was pushing you to do that <laughs> or early 2000s. So I was like, what is this? And then after a, a stint in New York City, my husband and I were just burnt out. We were poor, maxed out on every credit card. And we're like, let's go to Los Angeles. I got over the summer, we stayed in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and I worked at an old. That's where I grew up. Shut up. So do you know Oxford Valley Mall? Oh my God. That's my Ulta. That's my Ulta too. That's where I started. That's so funny. Yes. I started Perfumery Douglas, which does not exist anymore. Not because Ulta wasn't around, but at the mall, at the everything selling. Were you on the floor? Oh yeah, girl. I was unloading boxes on the trucks at 4.30 in the morning at Oxford Valley Mall, honey making $7 an hour. I probably bought something from you at some point. I'm sure that's you so did. crazy. But that's okay. where I fell in love because people would come in and I'd give them like a bare minerals makeover. And I was like, this is the shit. I love this interaction. I love this exchange. I'm a people yeah. person. And I was okay. I could do like two things, but I pretty much sucked. And I moved to LA and opened the first Ulta in LA. And I worked there for six months. And then I was like, I'm going to go to Bloomingdale's. And so I was on the floor in Bloomingdale's for about two years. And that's where I really, that was my grad school for makeup. Cause I would, I would fuck people up. I would make them look so bad. <laughs> and then I would learn from it, you know, and then I would do them. And if they bought everything, I knew I was killing it. And if they slithered away and moonwalked, I knew I was like, that was bad. But I learned about texture and skin tone and skin type and all that shit. And it was the best. It was like you put in your 10,000 hours and then I started to get good. And there were so many makeup artists in that Bloomingdale's that had so much skill. And so we would sit there and talk about products we liked. In fact, there was a guy that I worked with. He was at the mat counter. His name is Rob Rom Rumsey. And he is Billie Eilish's like, he's a huge makeup artist now. So, and he used to come over. He was like, so ahead of it back in the day. He would come over and be like, babe, we got to work on your blending. And I'd be like, okay. Yeah. If you stick it out long enough, no matter what you want to do. The LA Bloomingdale's is where all celebrity makeup artists get their start. <laughs> That's right. No, how did Back you make the, the jump day. then? That's a big, it, here you are messing up people's faces at the counter to doing like really big award shows and all this stuff. Yeah. I met someone who had like a makeup school. So I went and taught makeup, but at the same time was like learning makeup too. Got I it. And then snowballed and met someone who was a producer and I worked on reality shows like Nanny 911 and stuff like that. It was like a mishmash. And I, when I left Bloomingdale's, I was freelancing for brands, for Dior at first, because that's the counter I worked at, but they didn't give me enough hours. So I found, my husband found on Craigslist, this was before you were worried about getting murdered, but Craigslist used to be a good you know, place to find work. And we found Jillian Dempsey. My husband found that she was hiring for her company for a freelancer for like 20 hours a week. So when I was introduced to Jillian, I went to her office and her sister was hiring people and I met her. And when I went in, I saw all these pictures of celebrities and I was like, oh, and then they're like, she's a celebrity makeup artist. I'm like, that is so cool. I want to do that. So I kind of just worked for her for a while. She opened some doors for me and then I was literally the best assistant anyone could ever have. And all the big makeup artists that I worked for would tell the wall group, you have to hire this girl. She's great. I showed initiative. As your own Jamie Greenberg, not assistant to anyone. Correct. Yeah. What was your first job all on your own? My first job was Lionel Richie because I went to okay. film school. So I had a friend who was in television. He was in LA shooting Lionel for a documentary he was making about okay. Tuskegee, Alabama, which I think is where he went to school or he's from. So he's like, we're interviewing Lionel Richie tomorrow. Can you come do his makeup? And I was like, oh my God. Okay. I mean, that was like, he, that's all we listened to growing up was like my dad, like yeah. put in the cassette tape and I was like dancing on the ceiling. So I went in and he was awesome, but I was so nervous and I didn't even have to do anything. A little concealer, a little powder. It's like nothing, but I was nervous. I like had to pull over 
to go to the bathroom like three times before. <laughs> on, your, on the drive to do Lionel Richie's makeup. I just, all I picture is the the sculpture of his face in that one music video. Which oh my, to- I can see it. I can see it right now. I'm dead. Yeah, like, once you see, go Google it, everybody. Once you see this sculpture, <laughs> you'll never forget it. That's all I can say about that. It's just, it was back when music videos, music videos are so fun. They had like a whole other storyline. They had like a cinematic budget and it. That music video is crazy. But you just did him for like a, some, t- for oh, for this uh, documentary. For Sorry. an interview. Yeah, it was like nothing. But I... That was what like kind of cracked the seal into the celebrity world. And then my first yeah. big celebrity red carpet was a girl named Katrina Bowden, an actress. She was on 30 Rock. Is that what it was called? 30 Rock, right? Yeah, with Tina Fey and all that. She was like that really pretty blonde. And she was wearing a Christian Siriano dress. And this was when Christian Siriano was just on the... I'm telling you, when the dinosaurs roam, people. So it was like one of his first red carpets. And I was so nervous, but we like did it. She went on the carpet. I went home and used my dial up and I was like looking at Getty image and wire image. And I was ecstatic. So happy. And she left, she like texted me. I'm like, did we have text back then? Yeah. She texted me and was like, Hey, I left your makeup at, cause I left some pieces with her. She's like, I left your makeup at the front desk. Can you just go pick it up? I left you a little something. And I was like, you can keep it. And she's like, no, I just left yeah. something. So I went back to the hotel and she had left the next day. She had left me a handwritten note that was saying how special the day was, how great she felt and looked and to, and to thank me and left me $50, which I, that was like the first and last time I ever got She tipped, tipped you and gave back your leave behind makeup that you usually leave for them to like touch up their powder and whatever. <laughs> yes. What a sweetheart. The sweetest. And I was like hooked. I was like, okay, but like for a good five years, I think I was nervous every time I went to someone new's house. Uh, I mean, I don't see how you couldn't be, but you obviously built your roster and made a name for yourself because you're yes. very in demand. But this is like, n- there wasn't even people Instagramming while you did a celebrity's makeup. Like you were a behind the scenes woman. You worked at commercials. You worked at the counter. You worked there. But like Jamie makeup on Reels and TikTok is you're in front of the camera. When did you realize... I have to be honest, like you're good in front of the camera. Like, when did you know, like, oh, right, I could also do that? Well, I mean, fun fact, I was Annie and Annie Get Your Gun in sixth grade. So I always- Of I, course I, you were. <laughs> of course she was in drama club. This all makes sense. When I lived in New York, I did a little improv. I did a little stand-up. Like, So you're comfortable being- There are two, I do a lot of things wrong, but there are two things that I really like to do. And that is public speak which people think is crazy. And I like to exercise. So those are two things that go against like society's grain because I like it, you know, like, I don't know why, but I like it. So like, I realized that early on that it was a muscle that I could flex. And when the internet started, when Michelle Fawn came out and all that, she had like her own multi-network channel called Icon and Allure was hiring content creators. And I actually got picked by Linda Wells to do this insider Allure. So they paid me for like 24 episodes. And I did a show called Inside the Boudoir. And for Michelle, I did a show called Pretty Little Pranksters, where we would prank people and pretend they were getting makeovers. Wait, how have I not seen this? Or maybe I haven't and even put together that it was you. I got to go back and watch these. Well, I also like had just had a kid, so I weighed like 300 pounds. I, it's like, yeah, there's the looks through the years. I love to eat. And when I get pregnant, I get real big and I love every minute of it. But I've had three kids, so. Yes, I know. Can do I can to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I will do the math. <laughs> It's funny because that was before even you could be your own thing on Reels or Instagram and have your own handle. And I don't think it's average to have the skill of being good at makeup and also be able to talk on camera. I haven't seen those two skills come together. Because maybe like a QVC. QVC could have come calling yes. for you. You would have been great on QVC, right? I would like to do that. I still feel like that's one of those things that I'm like, I got to get there somehow. But my brother was on the news for 25 years. Bloss would be, bl- light, there'd be like thousands of units sold. I can see it already. <laughs> I know, with yeah. the ticking clock, I would love that. I would love that. It would it would fire up your competitive athletic streak that you said you have, your <laughs> exercise loving, I'll right? I'll do squats while I sell. I'll watch it, sure. <laughs> 
But I will tell you when I, in, when it was beginning, there would be so many artists that would see me coming and I could feel the disdain and I could feel the, ugh, oh, here she comes with her phone. Cause I was way ahead of the game. I was going and putting people on blast and it was like a whole thing. And publicists used to be like, she can't report on anyone. And I'm like, okay. So it was very touch and go for a while. And then now it's all fine and everybody does it and it's so saturated, but I love, I like it. It's fun. And celebrity clients, I imagine there's people that probably enjoy that side of, they know what they're getting when you come to do their work. They're like, this is fun. I'll be on your videos too. Why not? And believe me, I got slaps on my hand in the early days being like, well, this person looked at your Instagram and you have too many videos about other things, but you know, they don't want to, and I'm like, okay, I'm not for everybody, but that's the world, right? Every job you're in, you have clients, you have people you work with and you attract who you are. Katie Jane Hughes told us something similar, like the fact that her face was on her Instagram. People were like, what? Why is your face on your Instagram? It should be all the clients and the work that you've done. And they just didn't get it. And then here you are and she is both being successful. So, huh, yeah. jokes on them. And like the people that like it, they like it. And the people that don't, they don't. And listen, sometimes people that like it are like, not today. And you're like, I get it, man. Some days I don't want to do it either. I'm sure you feel the same way. I'm sick of my own voice. I have to edit this <laughs> podcast. I have to do other, I'm like, shut up, Jen. Just shut up. I know. Up. I get sick of myself too. Anytime, so I, t- I call it my alter ego because I'll meet people like on my daughter's softball team. The parents will be like, oh, I watch your videos. And I'm like, oh yeah, that, that one, she's annoying. <laughs> You're like Beyonce. You're like Sa- you're Sasha Fierce. Um, real yeah, I'm Sasha Fierce. <laughs> Not, I'm just watching the soccer today, ladies. It's funny that you brought up your kids because when we booked this interview with you in the zeitgeist was also this thing I wanted to talk to you about, which has to do with kids. But just so I know, you have three kids. How old are your kids? I have a six-year-old girl, a seven, a nine-year-old boy, and a almost 13-year-old girl. Okay. My stepson's nine. So we have like that in oh, common. They, yes. It's a wild age. Yeah. Well, all of them are at that really formative years where they're real little people and they're like going out in the world. And this is the thing that Jess and I have been like hung up on. I'm sure you've seen, I've seen you do videos on it. People getting younger and younger into skincare. Oh, the Sephora girls, the little Gen Alpha Sephora girls that are all over TikTok now. People just really enjoying getting into beauty and skincare. And I love that. But I think it brings up a lot of issues for parents sometimes and even kids and teens, or if you're an aunt in someone's life or just have children in your life of like, what is and isn't appropriate. So I wanted to dig into that a little with you if you're cool with that. Dude, it is a wild world that we're living in. I mean, if you think about it, I think I have like a decade on you, but like you were still growing up somewhat in the magazine world and our magazines didn't talk to us and anything that was aspirational was either watching, what was that show at seven o'clock at night, Entertainment Tonight or Our Cosmos. And that was it. There was, and our moms, there was nowhere else to get this information. And nowadays, if your daughter has social media, she can watch literally from the minute she wakes up in the morning to the minute she goes to bed. I know nobody would let their kids do that, but They are exposed to every single type of product in the world. It's wild. My daughter has learned to cook. She has all these hobbies because of TikTok. Your 13-year-old. My 13-year-old, yeah. No, my six-year-old, she picked up a... You don't know. I I just saw a a makeup line for ages three plus. And I was like, what? It just just came out. So, yeah. So, go on. What were you saying? So, they just are inundated with all this information and... Just like when we were kids, put it. I mean, I remember I used to wear the the coffee liner with frosted brownie. I looked ridiculous, but it's back again. Yeah, but what? I'm curious. What age? What's the first age you wore makeup outside the house? I think middle school. Listen, it's a for it's your first form of expression as a child. Like so many of us dress our children, then they finally pull away from that, and then their first way to express themselves besides their clothes is their makeup and their hair choices. So it's trendy. It's popular opinion. So personally, of course, I have the daughter that's into it, but not overly into it. What is it called? Preppy girls. I mean, I get all the lingo from her. So these preppy girls are going around and they're taking the drunk elephant and they're doing, they have like, you know, the Love Shack fancy dress on and they're wearing their aviator nation. And I'm like, 
cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. So I think the problem with most of it, I mean, the biggest problem is they don't need a lot of the active ingredients that are in the skincare. So anything exfoliating, anything with alpha hydroxy, beta hydroxy, glycolic, retinol, they don't need it. They don't really even need hydration, to be honest. But if they're going to do anything, little lip balm's fine, some SPF for sure, and a great cleanser and a moisturizer. And like, if they want to have some extracurricular fun, you can do a gloss and maybe a little cream blush and some mascara. But besides that, it's consumerism and it's crazy. I mean, listen, I'm a makeup artist, but let me show you. This is my daughter's bubble bag, but I get all this for free. I hate that. <laughs> well, yeah. So that's the thing. If you're out there and kids are asking for stuff, they're not asking for a little St. Ives scrub and some Tinkerbell lip gloss. Drunk Elephant's not cheap. Some of these brands aren't cheap. So my question is, how have you approached building healthy habits around appearance and opting into beauty stuff and without that pressure? Because like, it's okay if tweens are doing this because it's fun. Like you said, expressing themselves. I love that. But then there is a dark side to beauty sometimes, which is keeping up with the other people that you look at and jealousy and not feeling good about your own body. Mm -hmm. Have you found that you've had to have a talk about it? Like we talk about birds and bees. Do we need to have the talk about lipstick and photo filters with our kids? Yeah, we do. I am so honest with my children. And I mean, from a very young age, I'm very honest with, especially my 13 year old, she's very aware of everything. I mean, she watches housewives with me. So of course my husband was like, you know, that these are the worst people in the world. And she's like, I know dad. And then when she watches, she's like, has she had a facelift? And I'm like, yes. But I tell her about it because it is, listen, this, this is, none of this is going anywhere. So if you act like it's not there, you're doing a disservice. It's like, when we were little, nobody talked about anything. So every girl developed an eating disorder. Every girl developed like feeling less than because they didn't look like the magazines. No one was telling us that they were filtered. No one was telling us that they had problems. We're in a better place. And if you are in charge of little minds, I recommend being honest and talking to them about the realities of like, there is, there is, I had a mommy makeover and I showed my daughter, like, these are what my boobs look like before they touched the ground. I got them cut off. I wasn't comfortable. I've had filler and disport and I'm a representative for Galderma and Restylin. And I have been very honest with her and she understands it. She doesn't want it. She understands it. We talk about beauty is beautiful because it's different. Everybody looks different. Everyone is beautiful. And I've always felt that way as a makeup artist, like no matter who you are, if you sit in my chair, I can see your beauty. Beauty comes from your energy, comes from your personality, comes from your confidence. And that is what we work on. We work about like, there's only two rules in my house. And that is to listen and be kind. And that it all falls into place under those two rules. So I know I kind of went astray, but at the end of the day, my daughter is aware how expensive this stuff is. She knows she's lucky she gets it. She gives away a lot to her friends. We're walking the line, but like anything, if I were to not let her do this stuff, it would result in some bad behaviors, I think. Jess, I have to say your hair looks extra gorgeous and shiny today. What's going on? Well, Jen, it is my way hair gloss, okay? Yes, I'm using a hair gloss. Now, when I get my color done, my favorite part is at the end when they pop a gloss on to really make my auburn shine. And now I can do it at home. That's right, I don't have time to get to the hair salon every week. With the Way Hair Gloss, I get immediate shine straight from the shower and it takes only five minutes. The Way Hair Gloss treats damage and it also makes my hair more vibrant so that it looks better and it feels healthier. I know I love this product. It's made with hyaluronic acid and rice water and get this, it also protects against heat damage. So say you put on the gloss, then you wanna do a blow dryer or maybe you're doing a curling iron. The hair gloss helps prevent heat damage up to 450 degrees. It's not the only product we love from Way. Come on, we're old old school fans of this brand. Everything they make is delicious. The leave-in conditioner is so, so good. And Way may be known for their hair products, but they make the most gorgeous fragrances too. They have Eau de Parfum inspired by the world's most fashionable cities like Sydney's Bondi Beach and Paris. Give your hair a glow up with Way. Go to theway.com. That's spelled 
T-H-E-O-U-A-I.com and use the promo code mascara for 15% off any product. That's T-H-E-O-U-A-I.com, promo code mascara. It's that time of the year, Jess. It is New Year's resolution time, and I know we're going to get into it. However, I'm going to start with the first one because it's an easy one. No more wearing uncomfortable bras. I can do that. I can do, everybody wants to do that. No more uncomfortable bras, no more uncomfortable shapewear, period. Luckily, I am well on my way to making this New Year's resolution actually happen because I have Honey Love, an amazing brand of supportive shapewear, no underwires, and smooth and delicious and makes you feel comfortable and good. Not like you're wearing a corset. Okay, my Honey Love is something that saves my life every time I see my underwire lacy bra that I look at. I'm like staring it down like, oh, not today, not today. And I grab my Honey Love crossover bra. It is so comfortable. It has all the support of a traditional bra, but without any of the underwires. And Honey Love has more than just bras. They have incredibly comfortable shapewear, tanks, leggings. Can we talk about the legging? Honey Love's Legging 2.0 is another product that is making headwaves. They hold on to you in all the right ways. Not too tight feeling, not too compressive. They feel cool and they feel comfortable. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash mascara. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off at honeylove.com slash mascara. After your purchase, they're going to ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. Start the new year with confidence. Thanks to Honey Love. Jess, don't you love your ritual Hyacera supplement? I actually do. I love them. They're they're part of my, dare I say, ritual, my morning ritual. Why? Because honestly, Jen, I'm trying. I'm just, I'm (laughs) trying. Okay. This face, I'm grateful for every day on this planet, but I gotta, gotta keep it looking cute. And they make it easy. They make it very easy. The pills, I said this to you like a while ago, but I maintain, they smell good and they look nice They go down easily. They're good size. They're easy to incorporate into my ritual. And you know what? I've invested so much time and expense into my skincare routine. Let's scaffold it with something from the inside out. I think that's a smart way to do it. Hyacera is a once daily skin support supplement with two clinically proven ingredients. That's right, two. Ceratique is proven to help reduce wrinkles and fine lines in 90 days. That's one of those ingredients. The other one is Hyvest, significantly improves skin luster and suppleness compared with a baseline after daily use. And this has been rigorously tested and validated by a third party for allergens, microbes, and heavy metals. Ritual also works with world-class certification bodies to validate their products. And it's everything that you want in a supplement. Non-GMO, vegan, very important, gluten-free, allergen-free, certified B Corp, and made traceable. What else do you want? Reduce wrinkles without compromising on clean science. Hyacera from Ritual is a skin supplement you can actually trust. Get 40% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash mascara. This offer is only available through January 31st. Start Ritual or add Hyacera to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash mascara for 40% off. Yeah, so you're saying more transparency, more education, context for her so she's aware of why people do these things. And that's helping her make her own decisions. Exactly, because she's her own person. Is there anything that's ever, I don't want to bring your daughter into it personally, but when you look at other children too, where you're like, I remember my mom wouldn't let me shave till like a certain age. And I finally had to go to my grandmother and be like, Grandma Ruby, can you talk to mom? (laughs) Like I'm on the swim team and it's embarrassing. And like, (laughs) finally she convinced my mother to let me shave. But other than their skin being like, doesn't need acids because they their skin's fine and we don't want to get them like be unhealthy. But that you think it's just like too soon, too soon, or it gives you pause. I see elementary school girls with mascara and I'm like, why do I feel weird about it? I guess I shouldn't. They definitely like the mascara. I mean, if she came out with like foundation and stuff, I would be like, 
no. Right. But why are we, why does that mean? Because I feel like it, because it pushes them to grow up too soon in a way. It's like girlhood's so special. Yeah. It's like Lolita vibes. Even the way they yeah, well, dress. You don't want to sexualize anyone too young. That's of course plays into this whole conversation. And exactly. I'm not saying we, you do or people do, but it's just for such a long time, makeup was a seduction tool in a way. You're absolutely right. Like, I feel like right. it's different now because it's like personality, as you said, and showing your personality. I mean, look, I, I I can only speak from my daughter's point of view in the sense that she's like a tomboy. She plays sports, but she also is girly, but she's not over the top. I have friends whose daughters are insane, like in the way that they're so into it. And it's funny because I'll be like, I'm a cool mom. Lenny, do you want to wear this crop top? She'll be like, no, mom. But then I'm like, if I I see some of the girls will go over their house and I'm like, what is she wearing? So it's like, I guess, again, I mean, that's their personality, but it is very jarring when I go over to a friend's house and this little 13-year-old is stacked. Looks adult. Looks adult. It, It is... Yeah, it's sad, but I feel like, unfortunately, I mean, even my daughter's in seventh grade. In seventh grade, I was such a dork. I mean, even my looks, like, they don't have that puberty moment anymore. I don't, we were so gawky. Have you seen the TikTok where it's like, me in seventh grade and they're like got braces and they're doing an awkward dance and it's like people in seventh grade now and they're doing like the perfectly choreographed TikTok dance. Yes. (laughs) I mean, and they look like like sorority girls. Yes. Like the Bama rush. I feel like everything has evolved so much. So we have to just lean in and just talk to them because I'm telling you, if you communicate Hopefully they make the right decisions, but they're going to be who they're going to be. And if they want to wear a crop top, they're going to wear it. And if they don't want to wear it, they're not going to wear it. Like my girls are not girly. And I'm like, come on. I remember growing up, I played sports, but I had fake acrylic red nails and I wore red lipstick. And all the soccer players, when I would go to practice, would make fun of me. But I loved it. You can do both. Yeah, you can can do both. can multitudes. (laughs) It is. Funny for parents out there, they're like, oh, I, I don't know how to approach it. You're right. It doesn't always seem, though, too, when you have a teen or a kid, whatever you tell them, they're going to do the opposite. It's almost like, should we use reverse psychology and tell them, you should totally get Botox and filler at age 13, and then they'll just, like, <laughs> never get it ever in their life. I'm not, I love obviously, that. saying that's what you should do. But it does feel that way sometimes. It's good to get your take on it, too. And as a makeup artist, it's like, you know skin and as kids age, their skin doesn't need that stuff and it's still developing. And you already have the acne question in there. Like you pray that that doesn't trigger inflammation, acne. And I feel like if you throw some acids on there and all of a sudden their skin barrier is messed up and it's like- Yes. It's that simple though. Like a nice little gel moisturizer or something. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've heard it called so many different things, but I remember when it first started- and I watch a lot of these videos on TikTok. I get pulled in and on Instagram reels and I watch and I, first of all, these girls, I love them, but they, the way they put everything, it's so sloppy. It's kind of how they live in their rooms. They're all just slop. They're like teenage dirt bags. Do you think they're stepping outside the house like that? Or it's more like a crafty, fun hobby to make the video and then they wash it all off? I think, yeah, I or they blot it down. I think you're right, because when I do see them in person, I don't see any of that going on, but you're right. It's like artistic expression. Like, they're doing it to make a video. Yeah. But at a certain point, they're doing it to make a video, and it's fun, and it's a hobby, but then that might inform the way you think about your own appearance as you go out in the world, so you have to be careful. I mean, we could be talking in a year, and I could be like, ugh. Like I, she's not on social anymore because it is, it's, you never know when it's going to take a turn, but unfortunately it really is the landscape now. It's like, I remember during COVID I was, I bought my daughter a phone because I wanted her to be able to talk to her friends and a lot of her friends that weren't allowed to be on social and be on playing Roblox with each other or whatever, they definitely suffered mentally during that time. And I feel like the girls that all would talk every day, it was better for them. Yeah. We're social. We're social animals. We're social animals. And there are a lot of negative things about social media. Don't get me wrong. There are a ton of bad things, but that's everything in life. There's always positives and negatives, pros and cons. And it's about the moderation of it all. Meanwhile, my son plays 19 hours a fortnight a day, but don't tell anyone. (laughs) What's he into now? Atlas is big on saying, I can't even keep up with the video games. But yeah, I think if 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 you keep the communication lines open, it certainly helps. Yeah. Does your daughter wear Jamie makeup? Of course she does. Yes. And she gives it to all her friends and she'll be like, mom, the blouse. And I'm like, you're so cute. Yeah. Well, also I just, 
it's one of those lines that the artists you work with, like the packaging is just so fun. And I think Thank that's you. like a lot of these brands looked so fun and cool. And all of a sudden you step back and you're like, oh, they do look like toys. If I, if it, like someone came from outer space and came to Sephora, they'd be like, is this the toy store? Yes. <laughs> but I love that you've leaned into that because you do have such a fun personality and your products are fun. What was the first product you made for Jamie Makeup? It was the Bly Lighter, which is a blush highlighter hybrid. I got to send you a little Why basket. that product first? Because it was the first product. Well, it was just going to be like a one product and we'll then that'll be that and we'll see what happens. And it was the product that I would spend the most time making to put on my girls. So I would like put four different products together and put it on their cheeks for the red carpet. Girls meaning celebrity would, clients, not, we've yes. moved away from, not your, from yes. everyone's <laughs> personal, from Linda and accounting down the street. Well, now she wears it too. But yeah, so I was like, you know what? I feel like this is something that I should make because I don't have it. And so I made it. It did really well. We made all our money back in like two months. And then I was like, maybe I'll do something else. And then we did the Bloss and each product that comes out, I have found me and my creative team, Caveat, hello Caveat, shout out to Evan and Josh. We find an artist somewhere in the world to design the packaging in our color brand identity. I know, it's so, so cool. Thank you. Because I love art and I love street art and I love artists. Art's really tough to make a living in. So if we can highlight artists and I mean, they're all so talented, I try to buy a piece of their artwork to put in my house. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, they, I know them. I asked about the Bly Lighter because I feel like even looking at your work and having known your work for a little bit that you have always been a blush girly. And I feel like finally in the last year or two, people have understood. I don't know. My thinking was that when Selena Gomez did the Rare Beauty and that blush blew up was when the masses understood the power of blush. But I don't know. Do you love that people are wearing blush again? I mean, I, I think blush is the underdog of the cosmetics world. Right? Yes. I mean, you could have blush and nothing else and you look awake. I mean, this pinching of your cheeks goes back to like the 1800s. If you have a flush in your cheek, look at that. I just like oh, flushed that my cheek. Oh, that good. Right? She doesn't even need the Bly lighter. I don't need anything. Yeah, but it makes you look awake and alive and it's great. Is it a non-negotiable when you're doing someone's makeup? Like you're going to have blush on. Yeah. I mean, I really. Because you know there's people that sit in a chair and are like, no blush. Yes, I do. What do you say to them? I say, fine, if we're not going to do a color, let's do some sort of bronzer blush because it'll just give you a little bit more dimension. It'll warm you up. You have to warm up those cheeks. Yeah. So if we have to do like a nude or just bronzy, that'll work. And they're like, okay. What do people get wrong about applying blush? I feel like that's why some people had issues with it because placement was always hard. Placement is hard because you don't want anything, especially as you get older, you don't want anything to drag you down because everything's already starting to fall. I, I mean, I am seeing a lot of the trends starting to get higher and even in this area right now. Like we're doing this whole around the eye. She's doing a C, everyone, like up a near C, the, like the goggles. cheeky eye. Yeah. that's a, Is that the doyen look a little bit too? Maybe like that high yes. came from Korea and Asia with the high blush right under the eye and around exactly. the eye. Exactly. Yep. So it used to be like blended out the whole, uh, yes. So, I mean, I like that. I like, I still go here. I just make sure not to bring it too far down. Once we get into a nasolabial, I, oh, sorry, I said that wrong. The nasal. No, you said it right. What's the word? Yeah, you, you said it right. Funny when it came out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> nasolabial folds. That's too yes. low. It's too low. Yeah, if you're putting it above your mouth, keep it high, high and tight, tight and high. Speaking of things drooping, eyelids. I feel like even if it, not with age, just some genetics. Some people like a heavy eyelid. All the eye tricks and things that we learned on YouTube and whatever, it's hard when you have no eyelid to speak of because it's coming down over the lower eyelid or you have a monolid. What's your story? What do you do for, I now have a, uh, this is the personal portion of the podcast where Jen gets <laughs> personalized makeup <laughs> health. But like this outer skin, that's like a heavier. You mean this? Do you need, do you have to wear eyeshadow? What do you no. do? Yeah. Oh, you have it a little when you just did that. I have it a lot. I've seen you do like a video here and there about it. Yeah. Hooded lids, honey. What's your take on how to... So with the hooded lids, man, I'm going to tell you, lashes change your life. I mean, I love putting on a fake lash. A full lifty lash. Okay. And see how that... You can't even tell I have hooded lips, but I have real... I mean, I could get them cut, uh, cut The off. lashes, they're like a little fork to hold up the eyelid yeah. for me. <laughs> it's like a fence. It's a fence. <laughs> Who put up the fences? 
<laughs> to hold the skin up. You make sure you have a nice firm curl mascara. <laughs> do say, do, I don't joke. My uncle had to end up getting Botox because he had something where it covered his vision. The eyelid skin was getting too low. So it's no joke. It's no joke. I, my friend, a, a coach of mine from college was like, when I put my helmet on, I can't see because the my eyes cover the skin on my eyes come down. So they, so that that's a little tip for your insurance. They paid for her upper bleph. It's called. So you cut this. Yes, and, the bleph is very popular right now. It's very popular. But you know what I got, and it has made a huge difference. Tell me, I've been going to this guy in Beverly Hills, Dr. Nathan Newman, plugging him. He gave me this. It's just micro needling, but it's with plant stem cells. He's like the pioneer. He's been studying it for like 25 years. And I got to tell you, because if you look at some of my past videos, I don't have any space here. It's literally this whole thing is just covering. And like my dad has this and now I have space. Like you can see my lid. So it triggers like a tightening effect almost. A tightening and like collagen turnover and like... Without having to have a bleph, which is basically yes, cutting the extra skin out. He told me that too. He's like, now you can do a neck lift. You can do like all this stuff with stem cells, plant stem cells. And they were micro needled into your skin. So a little tiny puncture to let them go deeper into the skin. And you really noticed a difference, huh? Yes. It's crazy. And like, I feel like I try so much stuff and I'm just like, eh, like a lot of things don't work. A lot of products don't work. And so when I find something, I'm like, oh my God. Because I, I actually went to Dr. Groth and got a, I, I went and got, I waited a year to see him because everybody goes to, all the celebrities go to him. And just kidding. The celebrities don't get eye <laughs> jobs. Just I'm kidding. kidding. But yeah. So I went in and he's like, yeah, we could do a little pull here. And he's like, a lot of people are doing the brow lift, but you don't need that. I got scared. I was like, I don't know. I don't want to mess so with that. So you ended that. up not getting it. I didn't get that. So I was trying to look at alternative things. Another way to tighten up the upper lid. That's funny. I have a thing going. My dermatologist is retiring, but I still have a deal with her when it's time for me to get the upper bluff. She has to let me know. You know, your friends and loved ones won't. They'll be like, you look great, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like, you're my derm. You let me know. So this year, no, still no. But Who's your derm? Maybe I'll just, I'll be texting you pictures to you from now. Is it time? Is it time? <laughs> Is it time for the bluff? You send me yours. I'll send you mine. Okay, we'll and be that's honest. when we go to Doctor Groff. Is who's going to do it for me? That's, okay, he's the man. He'll probably. I hope. Put me well, in. wasn't that the greatest day? You went in. He was like, "You don't really need." Like he wasn't even thinking you needed it. So when the plastic surgeon tells you go home, yes, I know. He was like, "We could do it, but you could wait a couple more years." And I was like, "Okay, then let's wait." Yeah. I, after a while, I was just, I got a bug. It was after COVID. So I feel like I was staring at myself all the time. And we're looking down in the phone screen and it, our eyes look heavier anyway. And we're tired and the stress of the world was sitting on top of our lids. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. What question do you get? Like the, I just asked my question, but then I'm like, let's try and give some help to the people. What do you question do you get most often about makeup? I get that. Oh, it is common. Okay. Yeah, it's very common. And it's funny because when I was first starting to do a lot of this stuff, I'd be like, oh my God, they have so much real estate on their eyes. So it's mesmerizing to watch somebody put on 800 eyeshadows and primer on top of it to fill in the, and I'm like, it's so, and I'm like, I can't do that. What can I do? Oh, you would have had a field day with Jess Matlin's eyes, my co-host. She has so much real estate up there. It's gorgeous. It's so, they're lucky. Okay, so I think the other one that I get, all of the time is creasing under the eyes with concealer. What do you tell the people? Tell us. The people, guys, I'm everyone's personal makeup artist. And what you need to do is <laughs> you got to play around with concealers, just like you have to find the jeans that fit your body. And once you find that, I definitely recommend using brushes to blend your eyeshadow like you would a blending brush to blend your concealer. But also when I'm with a client for an entire day, I get paid to stay with them the entire day to touch them up. So like people really want a product that's going to last all day, but it's not really real. It's going to crease. There are fine lines. There is texture. There is moisture and humidity. And sometimes you have to retouch. And that's what's great about makeup. It's compact. You can throw it in your purse. You have a little mirror and you touch up. It's fun. It's a break. It's a me makeup meditation, you know, that you can take and remember to breathe and just collect yourself. 
When you say touch up, do you want them to put more product on or can they take that fluffy brush? Because that's the other thing. I don't think people use a fluffy brush with concealer. They think they need the little pointy flat tip one that says concealer on the side. Yep. But you use a fluffier brush, it sounds yeah. like, to blend it out. Break the rules. I'm going to show, like, this is the type of brush you would use to blend your shadow. Like a, she's giving us a, it's sort of a dome kind of. Yeah, like a dome. Loosely packed bristle. Use that to buff out the concealer so it's not so heavy in, in your, creases. In the creases, exactly. I mean, Il Maquillage is, I keep getting fed this on Instagram. And I have to tell you, I, I bought, I do buy things. I bought their foundation ones because I was like, man, they are they are selling me. They have so many ads going. They're rich, but I bought it and I liked it. And so I now I'm getting served with a concealer. I'm like, I think I have to try that because I haven't tried that concealer yet. The El Maquillage concealer. Yeah. What I love when you take a shopping in the stores in your little videos, what concealer <laughs> do you do you like for someone that's this aware pretty long throughout the day? Like I don't have Jamie in my pocket to touch me up. Like what what do you suggest? This probably wouldn't be the red carpet one. This would be more like the real girl one. Yeah. I mean, low end, I like the Maybelline that I think it's, what is it called? Age Rewind with the little. Yeah. So I good. like that one. It's so good. And for the price, it's like, you can't beat it. I don't love the sponge applicator, but I'll swipe it on with that and then blend it in another yeah. way. They should do one of those swab tests to see. What's a, like, what do you mean swab test? <laughs> do you watch any of those videos? Oh my God. They go swab the testers at Sephora and then put it under a microscope. Ew. Oh. <laughs> No. That's why you got to throw your stuff away. I like want to go buy a, I'm like, let's go get a biology set and start doing that on your stuff. Cause my daughter's like, that is disgusting. On my own stuff. I don't yeah. even want to know what my own makeup, my own makeup bag. I don't preach what I practice. Wait, I don't practice what I preach. Like, yep. I'm like, oh, you got to clean your brushes every week. And then I'm like, sorry, <laughs> parent spirit's expensive. And I got to wait another week before I get it out. <laughs> How much <laughs> brush cleaner do you go through in your job? I'm going to be honest with you. I do a heavy wash after every application. Right. A soap and water. Oh, with soap. you use soap and water and that gets out like foundation out of a brush for you? Yeah. It's meant to break down oil. It's called, why am I blanking on the name? Zote. It's, it was meant Zote. to take out stains in your pants. <laughs> And okay. it's, you can get it. It's like, it's called Zote. I actually made a video about it and called it Zote and got roasted. So and now I know it's Zote. <laughs> and I do like a heavy, it takes down any oils. It breaks down literally anything. And it really is nice to your brushes. Because if you use certain okay. soaps that have like volumizer or anything in it, it can kind of ruin the hair on the brushes. So you have to be careful that but it's a mild. But this is kind to the brushes. It's kind to the brushes. And after every single makeup application, I use it. Even on your own face? Not on my own face. That I do. I would say I do it to be honest. I want to say once a week, but it's really like every month, once okay. a month. I feel a little bit better. But of course yeah. I expect your sanitation on your client's kits and face to be top notch. Sometimes I would spray and depending on the client, some people are like really sensitive to the texture or the smell of it. And so I just was like, all right, I guess I can't use that. But I mean, it's easiest for people at home to do that on their brushes because that you can once a week at least, or so. Yeah, you could you take a paper towel and just go back and forth and get it all off. So satisfying. You mentioned your drugstore favorite concealer, and then I cut you off. Is there another one that was more high end that you like for an everyday concealer? There's so many good ones now. There's a lot of good ones. I mean, I used to be like strictly clay de peau, which is a drier consistency, but it's a beautiful finish. And then I was really into NARS Radiant Creamy Formula, which was like so good. But now there's all these brands that are making so many good ones like Doll 10 or Tower 28 or Make. I really like Makes. That one's really nice. Or Kosas. You, but you're naming all, those are all kind of creamy ones. You're into like a more, a creamy texture. Then. Yes. You said the clay to play was a drier one, but that yeah. one's drier. And Bobby Brown has those like cakes and those are very dry and nice, especially if you have so a lot of people try to use the same concealer under their eyes that they do on like a zit or like a imperfection mark. And a lot of times a creamy will work better on the mark because it's so dry and has a lot of texture to begin with and you don't want to highlight that. And then a drier one can work if you don't have dry under eyes, maybe the drier one works better because it sticks better. Sometimes you got to switch it up. And sometimes your body, I feel like, becomes immune to the products that you use over and over and over again. All the cosmetic chemists will tell you 
that's not true. And I will tell them it is 100% true. We all know we've all been there for whatever reason. Maybe it's my own skin changing. Or then they come for you like glossierbomb.com. You know, they change the formula and like their audience will not let anybody forget it because everybody wants the old one back. So I know sometimes the formulas are changed, but sometimes your face changes. What about you personally? What are you loving right now? Are you into fragrance at all? I am into fragrance. Okay, so I definitely like the new Missing Person by Floor. PH, it's so good. Creamy, musky sheets, just you but better. Yes, blowing in the way. It's like your, yeah, your epicurious life. You're just like in a Nancy Byers movie with your crisp linen shirt and your... <laughs> <laughs> That's the vision this paints is true. <laughs> okay, show me what it's like. <laughs> I was like, that's not my vision for Missing Person, but I like it. (laughs) I know. Well, actually, the name threw me off. I was like, who names? I don't like that negative name of Missing Person. That's scary to me. Well, she said, she was on our podcast and told us that it was a relationship ends and the smell of the sheets or like an old t-shirt of theirs that still smells like them. Like that's the vibe she was going for. I'm so dark. I listen to a lot of true crime, so I went the other way with that one. Yeah. I was like the milk carton. Nancy Myers in a crisp white shirt who then got kidnapped or <laughs> Murdered, something and that yeah. was missing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a brand I I what I like about this brand. I think it's a brand out of Canada. It's called State of Change. I just reached into this drawer. What I love about this is it's like a deodorant. It's like a little solid perfume and they're so cute. I love it. What scent is that that you just put on? This is the Joy no, yes, this is joy. I love joy. It's got in the pink container. That's in good. the pink container. And then this one's grace. It's in the yellow one. And this is a little bit more. I'm so bad. I mean, I, I have a really good sense of smell, but I never know what it is. I'm like, what the note is. Yeah. But I mean, if someone told you, then you'd remember like that's yeah. Frasia or whatever it is. Right. That one is. <laughs> You're like, it smells good. <laughs> it smells good, guys. I like it. And I like this because anytime I travel, I feel like it gets kind of messy. And so these, I don't have to worry about. I just throw them in the bag. So I'm into this brand. I love, I love scents. I could keep you here all day asking you for like a tour of your makeup kit, but that'll be for part two maybe because we have to make time. That'll be part two. Maybe Jess will come back. We'll have a reunion. But before we let you go, I have to do the Fat Mascara 5 with you. You're a listener, so you're prepared. You understand that this is a game. And it's sort of like word association, so don't overthink it. Okay. Okay. Jamie, Jamie Greenberg, Jamie Makeup. What's the first beauty product you ever fell in love with? Ralph Lauren, Lauren, the perfume. <gasps> Purple, square, yes. gold, circle, t- I know. Yes. Great one. Okay. Who would play you in a movie about your life? Oh, my God. Soli Moon Fry. Oh, Punky Brewster. Yeah. She's got big boobs. I don't know. (laughs) I can see it. I can see it. Okay. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, totally. What's your favorite snack? I love mini saltines. Okay. I didn't even know this existed. Does it taste just like a regular saltine cracker? Do you have the driest mouth ever? There's no... What happened? (laughs) No moisture with those? (laughs) That's... Okay. Isn't that an odd snack? Yeah. No, nothing's odd. I don't judge. I'm not going to yuck your yum, but I'm now intrigued and want to find mini saltines and try for myself. They're really good. I should send them to you with the Bly later. Also, for sweet, I'm going to go Rocky Road by the pint. Classic. Okay, no cheating. This is truly answer directly. What is the, not, doesn't have to be beauty, just anything. The last thing that you paid for, like today probably you bought something maybe. I don't know. (laughs) Oh my God. Yes. You know what I bought today? Vaseline, a big tub of Vaseline because I run and I'm chafing and I'm going to use that because I saw some runner using it. Also, you should get Mega Babe has a great chafing. Actually, I have hers and I use it. I mean, I use all of Katie Storino's products. I am obsessed with her. I ran out of it and I was in a bind because I just... And you're like, we'll go with the Vaseline. Hear that, Katie? Send Jamie some more, <laughs> some more product. Okay. <laughs> but I use, I wear her everything. Well, last question. What do you need to get a good night's sleep to get your beauty sleep? I I love the aura ring. So you put on the ring to help. What does it do? So the aura ring will track your sleep. So if you have a bad night's sleep, it'll be like, are you traveling? Did you have alcohol? Did you have caffeine past this hour? Did you this, do that? And you start to track it and you realize your habits and you're like, oh, 
I did this and that's why I didn't sleep well, or I did this and this is why I woke up. It helps you find out how to get a good night's sleep. Yes. I like it cold. My husband literally called me a vampire this morning and said, I'm slowly killing our family. Because you like it so cold and dark? I bought something called a chili, chili mat. What's it called? Chili What's mat? A chili? I, I need this because I, I, I can't afford to keep the air conditioner pumping in the summer as cold as I want it. It's so bad for the environment. I don't want to do that. What's the chili mat? Okay. So it's this, you fill it with water, hoses attached to, it's like a cube and it's attached to this mattress pad that you put on your mattress and you can buy just so it's on my side of the bed. Cause I like, I'm dead inside and I like it like 65 degrees and it pumps freezing water. But you know, you can also pump hot water if you like it hot. So when it got to be the winter, I just turn, I don't have the heat running in the house and it's been getting colder and colder. I know LA people don't think it gets cold here, but it's been like in the low forties in the morning. And so in the house, it's like 62 degrees. And my husband's like reading articles and he's like, your pulmonary system shuts down. I'm like, no, it doesn't. Wait, so that's like, my thermostat set like in the winter. And I even try to get it to 60 sometimes and my husband's me too. like, no, 62. But I want to be under comforters and cold. Yeah, but yeah, so yeah. you could put warm water. So instead of turning the heat on the whole house, you can have your chili mat or whatever it's called. See episode description. We will come up with the name. Yes, it I, I'm like blanking on the name, but I love it. And so my husband's like, I turned it off when we started getting, when it got cold because I didn't need it. Like I was sleeping with socks. That's how cold it was. But now he's like, you need to put on your chili pad and you need to just do your thing. And I was like, okay. He's like, because we're all freezing and you're a vampire. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Oh, mom needs her chili pad. Yeah, I sleep T- better T- in the cold. K name. Yeah, I get it. I get it. We want you to get your beauty sleep. Oh my gosh, it was so fun hanging out with you. You're exactly who you are on your reels and your TikToks. So much fun. I knew Thank you would you. be. Thank you for coming on the show. You are too. Thanks for having me and hopefully I'll meet you IRL one of these days. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's your reviews and feedback that help us make the podcast even better. Head over to iTunes to rate and review us or email your thoughts to info at fatmascara.com. We also want to answer your beauty questions and hear what products you love. To share a Razor One product with you or to ask a beauty question, email us at info at fatmascara. If you send it as a voice memo file, we can even share your voice on the podcast. You can also do that by leaving us a voice message. Our phone number in the United States is 646-481-8182. Thanks so much for listening. Tired of ads interrupting your favorite show? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Download the Amazon Music app or visit amazon.com slash ad-free sports. That's amazon.com slash ad free sports to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Enjoy thousands of ACAST shows ad free for Prime members. Some shows may have ads.